Welcome to another workshop log and exciting news, we've got a new arrival here in the workshop, in our collection, and it is this 1926 HRD 350 called the Model 80. And you might have seen this when we went to visit Arthur in our previous video, so check that one out when we looked at his or some of his collection. This is one of Arthur's bikes, but he, he wanted to part with this and it was perfect addition for us to have our other Vincent HRDs. And, um, but it meant that we had to give a bike up as part of the deal. The Black Shadow left our collection and we acquired this one. So it's one in, one out. But the reason we wanted this was because it's a very special machine. This is a Wolverhampton built HRD. So before a teenage Philip Vincent bought the brand name HRD out of administration in 1928, uh, Howard Raymond Davis, HRD, was producing his own motorcycles from a small factory in Wolverhampton uh, between 1925 and the end of 1927. This is one of the examples of those. So it's a 350cc with a JAP, JAP, uh, dog ear engine in it, which was the sort of super sports 350 engine. This bike is basically uh, a replica, if you like, of the, the bike that finished second in the 1925 Junior TT on the Isle of Man. Uh, same year, in fact, that Howard Davis then went to win the Senior TT first place on a 500cc version as well. So these were really rapid bikes, very desirable. Only about 1,200 of these machines made over a three year period, which sounds quite a lot, but actually it's only about two a day. So the factory pretty quickly didn't make enough profit and, uh, and went out of business. There is supposedly around 20 of these machines left in various forms, 500 side valves, softer 350s as well. Uh, and there's probably three or maybe four 350 dog ear versions remaining. Um, so very rare bit of kit. We couldn't pass up the opportunity to have it in our collection and it, it gives us a, a Wolverhampton built HRD alongside our Stevenage built models as well. So that's fabulous. Um, I've never ridden a hand change sort of pre-war or vintage machine like this before. So it's going to be a learning curve and one I'm excited about. So three speed hand change here. Also no twist grips on these. So it's all lever, uh, throttle and uh, choke on there or air levers. So it's going to be a different riding experience. But I mean, these were still pretty quick bikes. They don't really weigh a lot. So they're so light. Uh, and it's, it was guaranteed or capable of doing 80 miles an hour in its day. So it should cruise nicely at sort of 60 mile an hour even now. Um, but it's going to be, yeah, quite an exciting experience getting the hang of riding this. And we intend to take it on the Banbury run later in the year. A few bits maintenance wise that it will need. It runs really well. It sounds fantastic. Uh, and it rides well. I've taken it up and down the uh, sort of lane here just to practice on. Um, but we are going to have to keep an eye on a few things. So it's a total loss oil system. So I'm always going to make sure there's plenty of oil in here. It goes in, you can see on the site feed when the oil is going through, but it doesn't return back up here. So we've got to make sure that that's all working correctly. Um, also, it's keeping these, there's needle rollers in the rockers up here for the valves. It's making sure they're all well greased and everything's well oiled. Um, Cause again, it's not, the engine's not going to do the work for you. So it's up to me to keep on the maintenance of things like that. But that's all part of it and it's, it's not going to have a hard life so it should be fine. The main thing we want to do this year is, or straight away, is change this. So this has got a 19 inch rim on it at the moment, which is incorrect. It should be 21 inch. So the reason it's got this on, when it was restored about 20 years ago, uh, you couldn't get the tyres very easily and that's in the correct size. So a 19 inch rim like this was fitted to it, which is fine, but it's too small. So we've got the tyre to fit to it. Uh, we're going to get a central wheel to fit a new rim, 21 inch. You can see here that actually where there's a drill in here, the mud guard or this section should extend further out. There's a space down there that we can remove as well that will give us the greatest circumference. And you can see there's loads of room in the back here, a tolerance that hopefully then it'll accept the larger rim without too much trouble. The only challenge we might have is on these mud guard stays, which might need extending down there to allow it, but there is quite a bit of space in there. So fingers crossed, it will slot straight in without too much effort. That will complete the bike quite nicely. Um, got some new rubbers to fit on here. This one's okay, but this side, the uh, John Bull knee grip is split. 
So I've got a couple of those already in the uh, in our spares cupboard that we can fit on there to uh, sort that out. So these are genuine sort of replicas of the John Ball grips that are fitted back in period. Quite a common piece, easy to get hold of. The other issue that we're going to deal with on this, but not immediately, we'll do this, we'll enjoy the bike through spring and summer, but when we get to autumn, this because this will be quite a big job, the tank. So you can see here, look, bubble, bubble, uh, and some more issues here. So there's either swarf or something underneath the tank where it's soft soldered, or what's more likely is there's pinholes and the ethanol or fumes of the petrol are creeping through and causing issue with the paint. So it's a case of getting the tank off, getting it stripped and getting it fixed or repaired accordingly, which can open up a can of worms when you get the paint off these as to all sorts of shenanigans underneath. So it could be quite a big repair job and could take quite some time. So let's just use it as it is for now and then we'll look to deal with that uh, later in the year when we're not going to use the bike in winter. So really just can't wait to get out on this and start experiencing it and using it and showing it and taking it to events. So very pleased to have that on board and as part of the collection now. of other points to mention while we're in this room then are AJS which is the big V-twin uh, Model 2 from 1937 that's a bike that we're going to sell so that will be uh, being prepped get ready up for up sale so we'll make a new video for that um, showing that running taking it out for a ride and uh, and promoting that through the channel like we did with our Norton International uh, recently which did sell and is now residing with its new owner uh, Fred uh, out in the USA so uh, that made it over to the States he received that last week and he's waiting for the winter to pass there so he can go out and enjoy it but yeah we've had a new cable made for this brake lever now uh, it goes down and in through the fork down to the brake arm at the bottom so that's been done just waiting for it to come back we'll get that fitted and uh, yeah we'll get this out and about on the next workshop video you'll be able to see that and then finally the Marini uh, needs some new steering bearings in that. There's a bit of play in the bearings there. Um, so we're going to get some taper roller bearings to put in there. That'll be on the bench in the next couple of weeks and getting that ready for the springtime. Uh, other than that, that's ready to rock and roll, that one, which is good. So let's take a look in the workshop and see what else we've been up to. So Marini, haven't done anything with that. That's just sat there uh, at the moment. Main projects have been the Royal Enfield. So we've had a selection of kits supplied to us by Tech Bike Parts in the UK. Uh, upgrades, if you like, styling upgrades and uh, mechanical upgrades for the Interceptor. They're all fitted now. I've been doing that over the last sort of couple of weeks with my dad. Uh, they're on. We'll do a separate video on this, show you what we've done, what the benefits of those are, what challenges we face fitting them and other tweaks we want to make. So keep an eye out for a video on that soon. And then the main thing I want to show you is this. So this is our 1931 uh, Vincent HRD Jap 500 model TJ. Um, TJ standing for triangular frame, which is what this design was called, and J for Jap engine. So now frame is coming together nicely. Uh, I've fitted since you've last seen it, so I think, I think this might have been on there last time in the last video, the oil tank. That's all on. Spring boxes, they were all in individual components, so they've all gone back together now with these bands round, which are the friction dampers, basically, these are. So it's this big spring in there, compresses with the rear, rear end, and you can just dampen it with these friction dampers here by tightening the knobs accordingly. They've gone up. These were a bit of a pain to fit, actually, because we had these re-chromed, uh, triple-plated chrome, really hard wearing. They were previously just painted um, and the paint just wears through really quickly where it rubs on these outer shrouds to the inner. Um, but the chrome was so thick uh, that we had to get these on a grinder and really grind the edges off to get them to fit into this, this upper shroud. So that took quite a bit of effort, but they're on now. They look fantastic. Pleased with that. Uh, brake pedal and the brake rod and the sort of spindle there is all fitted on. That's, that went on no problem. That was easy enough. And then the front end, 
there's another spring box, again, with the same friction damper. Uh, we had to buy some new uh, fittings, if you like, uh, nuts and bolts for these cycle thread uh, bits to uh, fit them, because despite my best efforts, I did mislay one or two of these when I took the bike apart, and they're all mismatched anyway, to be fair. So we've got ones that are all matching now uh, and fitted in accordingly. Front girder fork, druid girder fork, these are. Again, spindles have gone through, so you've got four of these links, four spindles, which are just greased from these grease points here, and it all pivots on that accordingly. Again, it's not complicated, it's just fiddly getting them back through. And there's no manuals for these bikes, so it's all just done over from photos that we've got when we took it apart. But again, you can't always rely on those either, because the guy that put it together in the first place might not have done it right either. So anyway, it's going back together nicely. They'll all be tightened up and done. Druid steering damper and all the roller bearings are in there, taper roller bearings. So it's, yeah, it's starting to get some progress. Mud guards go on next, and then we'll get the brake shoes put back in the brake plates, those in the wheels, and get that on there so it'll be a proper rolling chassis within the next couple of weeks. So slow but steady progress. But you've got to remember, this is just a hobby. It's not a full-time job. We're fitting in this in and around my, uh, my day job, as it were. So... Uh, trying to do it in my spare time, but we're getting there. And the plan is that come sort of late spring, this will be up and on the road because the engine is now back. This is the bottom end of our Jap 500 engine for this machine. So this went away to Robert Thomas, a company called Parts Made in Bromsgrove near Birmingham. And the reason it went to him was we had a problem with the, the bush on the main shaft here on this side. So. It's a phosphor bronze plain bush, and this sits here, over there, and in the case, but it was moving in the case. And the problem with that is it was loose also, so it was wobbling around on the actual crank itself. Now, there's an oil feed in there, so you can see that hole there. It feeds in, and it goes through that spiral oil way inside the bush to make sure that it's all well lubricated. This was yeah, loose, moving in there, and it was worn out. So we needed a new one making. The man for that was a guy called Robert Thomas. He's made a new one, fitted it into the crank, made it, stoned the uh, main shaft here as well, or the shaft, to make sure it fits nice and snug, and it's all correct. It's re-threaded or uh, tapped the thread on the end, so that's all spot on as well. And he's also put a little, uh, little peg in there as well. So you can see the little circular peg that will stop that ever moving again. So it's half in the bush, half in the case. So it's all done properly and the face is machined correctly up against uh, the inner part of the case also. So real top job on that, really pleased. While it was there as well, he also uh, checked the flywheels to make sure they were balanced and nice and true. So they're all good, um, or within tolerance anyway. So they're all uh, spot on really. So the bottom end is all good. The bearing on the other side is a roller bearing. That, that was fine anyway, so no issues with that. Big end is all good. So it's just a case now of really uh, sealing it up, getting it back together and starting to rebuild it, um, which is good news because it was in a pretty sorry state before. So hopefully that will see it good for another 20, 30 years. He also had the cylinder head because we had loads of play in the valve guides. So this, he took the valve guides out and you see as one of them came out, it actually broke. So that was fractured uh, previously, so that was no good anyway. And you can see when you look down, look how oval it is. So you see how, how much the, uh, the valve itself was rattling around in there, moving about. So it was in a sort of sorry state, really. So that's all fixed. New guides are in there. Also then the valves have been, uh, the stems were checked and the valves were good. Everything lapped in and sort of sorted out so it seats nicely. Also, uh, he ran a tap down the uh, spark plug as well, so that's ready to go. And funnily enough, looking at that spark plug, you can see that it should be a longer reach in there. That's the one that was in it. So, again, we'll make sure there's a different type of plug in there, which might help it start and run a bit better than it previously was. So, that's all good now. Um, I've given that a quick lick of paint, but I'll go over it again. And we'll start putting the engine together ASAP. So there we've got some new uh, sort of fasteners and uh, bits on there, nuts and bolts. One that we have got, does anybody know what you call one? It's like a coach bolt, but instead of being like a coach bolt that's got like a square section underneath the domed head, 
it's just got this little keyway or little peg on it, little nib there that stops it turning. So that's, that's going to fit, actually there's one that goes in the top here, the clamp there, and one that goes there. So you can see this sort of section that it will fit into to stop it turning. But I can't find anywhere to get these from at the minute. Um, it's a cycle thread on the end, but if anyone knows what these are actually called or where I can get one, that'd be quite handy. Pop in the comments below. And finally then, I need to introduce another bike that's uh, part of the collection. And again, you might have seen this when we went to visit Arthur. It's one that, that he previously owned and now belongs to me, which is good. Uh, 500 Ducati GTL, uh, but it's got a Desmo head on it, this one. So it's slightly later head fitted to it, which is better. But uh, yeah, these are the, uh, from that period when uh, the styling went very 1970s, all of a sudden slab sided, and they weren't very popular, one, how they looked at the time. So I think they only ran them for a couple of years before they softened the styling to more traditional rounded look, if you like. And they also improved the head. They all became these Desmo engines because the early ones had lots of mechanical issues with the cam chains not coping, lack of oil up at the top. Um, they were basically a bit of a disaster, to be honest, for Ducati and really damaged their reputation when they were out in the day. Um, lots of these went to America, but they didn't last very long. And uh, I quite like it. <laughs> I think this 70s styling actually looks really cool now. I love the colour and it's in very original condition. So I believe that's the original paint. It's got genuine Ducati, is it Lanfranconi exhaust, silencers on it still. Um, yeah, and I think it's a, a cool little bike. So. I'm going to use this and enjoy it and uh, see how we get on with it. Uh, nicknamed the coffee grinder uh, by some people because uh, that's, I don't know, that's just what it was called in a, a love it or hate it way. There's a few things we want to do to improve it. There's a bad dent here in the silencer, so I don't know whether our dent man can get his bars in behind there and, and improve that a bit, um, which would be nice. It needs detailing, a bit of a polish up and a clean, which we'll, we'll do uh, over the next week or two. There's also a dent in the tank, which hasn't gone through the paint, luckily. So again, I'm going to see if my dent man can get something in behind there and, uh, and give that uh, a scene too, as it were, uh, and improve it. But overall, the switches all work, the electrics work. It starts up. I've not ridden it yet, so next on the list, let's take it out for a spin. So literally got about 100 yards down the road and had a problem with this. So it was only firing on one. So, for some reason, the right-hand cylinder is lukewarm, the other side's red hot. So, uh, it's not going to play ball today, but that is the joys of classic bike ownership. I've had the plug off, it was sooted up, cleaned it up, and it's still not cured it. So, I think what the issue is, we've checked, there is a spark, it's a fueling issue. So, there's probably a bit of crud just gone into the bottom of the car. Um, it has been stood a while, so we'll whip that off and have a look, and then hopefully that might cure it. Right, we'll just put the fuel on, I'll show you that it's only firing on on one side really and it's hunting and coming in and out so ignition on see there and richer which will rev it plenty it's not going to tick over well, I love it is so this side there's no heat Oh. There's a jet under there. Yeah, that's no good. I can't smell any fuel at it now. No. That's far enough too. Bit of a knock. There's a lot of knocking. 